What is good, YouTube? Quinway Basketball Analysis, holding down analysisplayground.com while giving y'all that analysis tonight. We're going to talk about my Boston Celtics. Had to wear green just for them to support what they're going to try to do this year. No Kimba, no Kyrie, no Terry Rozier, but Al Horford is back and ready to go. He has some down years. And now he's trying to come back and have a resurrection season with a team that has two all-star perimeter players and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to lead this team. And we finally get to see if Marcus Smart can take that next step and become a legitimate difference maker as a starter consistently in his first year starting majority of his year as a point guard and primary decision maker and playmaker at that position this season and coming off another extension with the Celtics as well as Brown and Tatum, Robert Williams, and I can go on and on even with Grant. So this team has a lot of intelligent guys, have a new coach with Ime, a guy that has a lot of respect. A lot of people know about him. A lot of people hear about him. He's finally getting a chance. He's finally getting an opportunity to be a head coach in the league. And you have a team that has a lot of talent, has a lot of floor space, and have guys that can make plays and create shots and also have two-way players and guys that can defend on the perimeter with Brown, Tatum, and obviously Green. And then on top of that, well, with Brown, Tatum, and Marcus Smart, and they also have Al Horford and Robert Williams in, in the paint. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to choose to attack offensively. We've seen this Celtics team under Brad Stevens be a roller coaster ride. One minute they offense is this, then they change it to that, then they change it back to this. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, but they didn't ride a strategy, didn't enhance the strategy. They just completely changed it a lot letting you know that they still really had no identity that they can fall back on and really rely on. And we even seen that in the playoffs against the Nets. Now, I give them more of a pass for that, mainly because they had a lot of injuries and it was coming throughout the series. And it was key ones to the, a lot of their offensive, and play, offensive players and defensively. And they also didn't even have Jalen Brown. So that's what you have to do when it comes to adapting. But at the end of the day, you look at this team, Robert Williams is going to be a huge player this year, getting his extension, really showing a lot of potential last year as a center that can rebound, protect the rim, and still growing offensively, still learning when not to foul, when to rotate, when to help. He has a lot of rawness. He has a lot of flashes, but we're going to start seeing him put it a little bit more together. They're going to have to trust him. They're going to have to be hard on him. They got to show him and guide him, but that's just a process of becoming a starter. That's the process of being a high value role player, and they feel like he can become that guy. Now they're giving him the chance to do it. Now we will see if he's mature and see how much they'll give him um, the leash to make mistakes and, and see at this point he's going to be a reliable player. Grant Williams was huge for us, a switchable guy that can guard multiple positions, give you some type of floor space and perimeter scoring, and has high IQ defensively and offensively. A guy that doesn't need the ball but will compete, will go out there and, and play the strategy, will go out there and, and use his brain and his foot to get advantages and, and be able to close distances but also make the right intelligent play whether that's passing scoring or just keeping the ball moving he's an integral part to what this team does and this identity and it's good that they gave him the extension and gave him a little bit of loyalty for what he brought to this team since he's been there we didn't really know what to expect with grant williams but so far you know with the celtics he has exceeded our expectations of his role playing has become very important to this team identity on both ends of the court. Obviously, we got Dennis Schroeder, a guy that really didn't know where he was going to go, really didn't know how much he was going to get paid. But as a Celtics fan, I'm happy that we got him. We needed an offensive punch. We needed somebody that can create some chaos offensively, especially after losing Kimba for basically nothing. Um, we got that with Dennis Schroeder, a guy that can hit threes from time to time, can play make somewhat, also can get to the basket, also um, can um get out in transition it's going to be interesting to see if we go small ball it's going to be interesting to see if it, his mentality is to get a check play harder 
play and earn more respect around the league after a flop really this offseason um, financially. And he's going to try to get things back on track. And hopefully we can use him to his strengths, but also use that as an advantage and get one of his best seasons out of him, even if it's coming back off the bench, which was his role before in Atlanta. And it's going to be his role this year, I believe, with the Celtics. Josh Richardson came off two low years. One in Miami, he was really starting to build his name and his reputation. Didn't really live up to that in Philly. Really had an even worse year in, ball, in um, the Matt Dallas Mavericks. But we'll see what he does. He's a guy that can handle the ball, make plays, can shoot threes. Not consistently, but has potential to do it. Maybe them giving them this contract extension. Maybe them making a trade for him. They see something that we don't. They see something that he can become. Or maybe they talk to him and he's re-motivated to prove himself again. The right role, the right players. He's not going to have the same type of impact because we're not going to need him to. And he's never really been a high-volume scorer ever in his career. And we ain't going to need him to do that for the most part. But what we need him to do is be switchable make plays, make shots. He's shown that he can do that throughout his career. And with our perimeter players being our best players, we don't need him to do too much. And I think that that'd be a good role for him. Peyton Pritchard has really gained a reputation as a guy that can really splash shots, show his playmaking chops in summer league. And he's going to have to continue to add that to his game because his natural position is point guard. And that's what we're going to need him to play sometimes. The more you can do, the more valuable you are to a team and him having that dynamic would just make him a better player and just give him more uses and, and roles for this team and being able to hit the mid range in the three and even hit a floater every once in a while makes Peyton Pritchard a, a very guy, a very dangerous guy because you have to pay attention to him, whether he's on or off the wall because he is another high IQ play, a player that can make shots, make plays and can be very dangerous with the right talent around him on the court. Jabari Parker, he was a guy that we picked up. I always say we'd rather have him than not because he's a quality role player that can get buckets, whether it's hitting a three, whether it's scoring the isolation in the post, in the mid post, or whether it's just being on the court as another weapon and another guy that can break down the defense and, and create shots for himself or just playing off the ball. Jabari Parker may not get significant minutes or major minutes, but he still is a valuable rotation player because he actually have NBA skills sets that you need in the league. So I'd rather have him than not, even if he might not have the hugest role. Aaron E. Smith gives you spacing. Spacing is important in this day and age in NBA, especially when you need scoring. Aaron E. Smith is a guy that can light it up from three, from mid-range. And even though I don't think he have a huge, huge role offensively on this particular team, but it's still good to have somebody that you trust and know what they bring to the table on the court. And that's something that you know he can do if he's healthy. Now he has to do it consistently. And if he does that, he can have a long career in the NBA. Romeo Langford, we still don't know what he's going to be and what he's going to do. Hasn't really been able to figure the offensive game out enough at the NBA level. But this team is loaded with guards. We can continue to try him out, continue to utilize him the best where we can. And if he grows and show a lot of signs, he get more playing time. If not, we have a lot of guards ahead of him. So we can still continue to grow and develop him until he's ready or probably just, you know, see what he's going to be with us in the future because his future may not be destined with the Celtics. We have to see with that. Same with Luke Cornett, a center that gave us a big body. Um, I think that he may not have a, a 25, 30 minute role, but I can definitely see him just being a legitimate backup big in 10 to 15 minutes when guys need rest or we need size or we just need him because somebody gets injured to fill in that fill in that space to be able to rebound and block shots um, and also give us a little shooting. We'll see if he can still shoot consistently from mid range and three at the NBA level. That's going to be something that he's going to continue to have to prove throughout his career if he wants to be here for a long time. And his cancer, we know he hustles hard, he plays hard, can make shots, can go hard at the basket in the post, and can also knock down free throws. We already know, not a reliable defender. <laughs> not a reliable guy in the playoffs but he's a guy that can torch bad teams and torch teams that really don't pay attention to him and you can use those to win enough games to get a top five seed in the east and that's going to be our goal this year and i think Kenneth Cantor can help us in that essence you know during the regular season al horford was a guy that has always been known as the perfect guy on your team a guy that's going to defend 
hit shots from mid-range, has potential to hit shots from three, free throw shooter, passer, screen setter, and a guy that is going to be a leader on the court and communicate defensively and offensively to get guys in spots and hold them accountable and do it the right and proper way. And that's something that we had. That's something that we lost to him and bringing him back. His salary is high. Maybe he gets in a situation where he's around the right team, he's happy again, and he really wants to show he got some left in the tank. That's something that we need at the center position. That's something that we also need at the forward position. And that's something that Al Horford brings to the table at this point in his career still. We'll just see what he has left as a starter, and we'll see if he can still shoot that ball and still defend at a high level, and that's going to be his biggest test for this team. Bruno Fernando, just a solid wing that gets switchable and also gives us size and athleticism. Taco Fall is not on the roster anymore. Carson Edwards not on the roster. Neither is Chris Dunn. And then you just have Jalen Brown, a guy that has consistently improved and grown as a player and as a defender, one of the best perimeter defender as a guard. Can also shoot the three down, handle the ball, create a shot off the dribble, get to the basket, get out in transition, and explode. It really gives us a lot of versatility in that regard. One of the best shooting guards in the league and can continue to improve as a defender, can take a step up offensively, especially after he rehabs and fully become healthy because of the wrist injury. Him and Tatum are going to be the heart and soul of this team offensively. We're going to rely on them to create a lot of shots. We're going to rely on them to make a lot of plays and shots, and we're going to rely on them to be <laughs> in a situation where they are the guys. They are the veterans. This is something that we thought that they could be. This is something that I knew that they can be. Now it's time for them to go from an all-star level to a superstar level. And if they can do that at the same time, this team can be one of the top four, top three teams in the Eastern Conference and be a legitimate contender if they really continue to improve and show that growth that they have the last couple seasons. And if they do that, we're going to be dangerous. We're going to be tough to beat, especially because they show the side that they can take over and close games too. And we're going to need them to do that consistently throughout the season in the playoffs if we want to achieve our goals. And Mark is smart. We need you offensively. We need you to be locked in and geared up for the beginning to the end of the season. You having the opportunity of a lifetime to be a starter on the organization that drafted you, on the organization that believed in you, and on the organization that's finally given you the opportunity that you deserve at this point because of your loyalty and commitment and dedication to this organization and this team. Now we need you to shine. We need you to show your playmaking ability has improved and took another leap this year as the lead playmaker. We're going to need you to be able to splash those threes, not inconsistently, not every once in a while, not when you get hot, but throughout the regular season and, and, and in the big moments too. And we also going to need you to go out there and get to the basket, get us some paint shots, get us some floaters, really just show a ball and the evolution in your entire game. Um, on both ends of the court. We know they took a step back defensively last year, and we need him to get back on that this year. And with him, Brown, and Tatum, Robert Williams, and Horford, we should be one of the top 10 defensive teams in this league. And with all those guys being able to create space and, and make their own shots, we should be one of the best offensive teams too. And that's going to be up to Ime Udoka to harness the power of the two-way potential of all of these players, but also the space and shooting creation that these guys offer, put it all together in the system where everybody's moving, everybody's cutting, everybody's dangerous off the ball or on the ball, and they have that ability talent-wise. Now we just have to see a system that's integrated that allows them to do that. And if they do it, this team could be one of the toughest and hardest matchups for any team in the league with the ability to go small, the ability to go lanky, the ability to have a lot of creators and spacers. This team can be very dynamic, very dangerous on both ends of the court, given the right tutelage uh, uh, of Popovich being on Ibane Madoka Shoker shoulders to ability to now live up to that hype as this guy that could be a head coach. Now he is one, and now he has the opportunity to leave his imprint on this Celtics team, and he has all the talent that he needs to be successful. Now it's up to him to get these guys on the same page, get these guys ready to go, and get these guys competing each and every game, even if it's in practice, to have that effort and energy that we need to be one of the best teams in the league. We have the talent. We have the stars. We have the potential. It's up to E-Man and his coaching staff to get everybody locked in and going 
each and every game. And if he does that, we can be one of the best teams in the league. And if that's the case, I can see this team being a contender. If not, I can just see this team being another good team in the East, being a first or a second round exit, or even getting to the conference finals, but coming up short. That's how much upside this team has. That's how much talent this team has. Now it's up to Ime Doka to get it figured out, get everybody playing at the highest level, and live with the result with what that comes with. Other than that, let me know what you guys agree or disagree with. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Hopefully you guys enjoy the holiday with your friends and your family. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis signing out. See y'all tomorrow.